Welcome back to the second episode of the special edition of White Sox Weekly here at SoxFest 2016. Brooks Boyer is sitting down with us now, talking a little bit about the White Sox. Brooks, I uh, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. I'm here, so the, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the attendance at SoxFest, the opening ceremonies and everything, incredibly well done. Kudos to the, the video department. And the uh, I thought the honors for you know setting up Jose and setting up Chris Sale with the, uh, the the good seasons, great seasons that both of them had, you know Jose in his second, and Chris Sale striking out 274 and setting a White Sox record. I thought it was all really well done and put stuff into perspective for us too. It, it, it really is when you, when you look back and certainly there's disappointment in the final record and the results that you're going to have for last year. But when you think about the accomplishments of Jose Abreu and Chris Sale. It's something that's really remarkable. I'm sure you have the stats somewhere. When you think of Chris Sale had right around 210 innings right. versus Big Ed Walsh with 474 innings. Slightly more. Just, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty good at math and the greater than, less than thing. And, mm -hmm. and it just for, for him to be able to accomplish something like that tells you what a special talent that we're lucky to be able to watch, you know, hopefully every five days. And, and then when you think about... Albert Pujols and Jose Abreu being right. the only two to do something like that. Uh, it's quite a feat, and, and we're lucky to have them as uh, members of the White Sox. Well, on Chris's side, too, I, uh, you know, in Rick Hahn's opening kind of conference with the media, and then we had Chris here last night, um, Chris had mentioned, Rick said, Chris had mentioned to him at the end of the season that, you know, Rick, I, I can come out here and make six, seven more starts. I feel strong. I'm, I feel like, you know, I'm ready to go pitch more, and obviously he wants to do that, and obviously he wants those postseason starts, but I thought, you know, just from a physical standpoint, for a guy to be able to to say that, have it out loud, and now it's now it's everywhere. I mean, with a guy like Chris, who's you know had to skip a start or two here or there. I mean, everybody does to stay healthy. Awesome to hear that kind of thing from a guy like that. No, no question about it. And for 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 a marketing guy, you know, I, look, if he wants to pitch every third game yeah, or fourth game, we, we'll we'll sell the tickets to it. I think we'll 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 run him ragged. But to have a, a special talent like Chris and to be able to market a special talent like Chris, you, you've seen we've done the K-Zone for him uh, to, to, to be able to, to, to put out there that this is a unique talent that people are going to like see. Whether you are an avid White Sox fan, a casual baseball fan, or a sports fan, to be able to have uh, the opportunity to see Chris Sale pitch is is unique, and it's something we're lucky to do. So I, I find it kind of interesting. You know, you, you mentioned the, the marketing department and knowing the, the K zone for Chris Sale, and I've, I've opened up the old baseball reference um, page for Chris. He just passed 1,000 strikeouts in his career last season. And i got to imagine that at some point, you know, you and the boys have to sit down and start thinking about, you know, other milestones that might get reached for the guy and, and whether or not there needs to be some kind of you know, big ticker board. I know we've got new, you know, scoreboards and stuff there, video boards up there too. So, you know, I, I wonder if there's a brainstorming yeah, going we, on. Yeah, we always look at that, of what's coming up or, or, or you know, we, we hear it from MLB because if something's coming up, they want baseballs or, or dirt from the field, right. or cleats or things like that. Vials so, of blood. So, yeah, so exactly. So we get to we get to know what's, uh, what people are looking for and what they want, and uh, at that time we can start track. We did we had a lot of fun with Jim Tomey going for his 500th home run back a number of years ago, and, and when you look at milestones like that, if Chris stays healthy, we're going to have a lot of them to celebrate. Oh, I, I absolutely agree with that. Let's talk a little bit about, and a couple of questions have been asked on Twitter actually about them. You can follow me at C1 McKnight. Uh, and if you want to get a question answered or at least addressed here on White Sox Weekly, you can absolutely do so. This one uh, was for Brooks. I've been asked to ask you whether or not the White Sox plan to use these new spring training form uniforms in the future and maybe even in game. We were talking about them a little earlier. I got, uh, I got Giorgio's wearing it with the, it's the Batterman. It's the all black and white Batterman logo on the top of the hat. And then the jersey on the, I believe it's the left part of the chest, has the Batterman and the socks with the font from 83. Can you tell us a little about how, you know, that one was picked for these new spring training uniforms and sure. And how can I get one? Yeah, the, uh, the the jerseys Major League Baseball had sent to us. They wanted to try some creative designs for spring training. And this isn't just the White Sox. It was all the clubs. Sure. And so they, they sent us five, six designs. Uh, we, we looked at those. We eliminated a, a few pretty quickly. Uh, got down to the, the three that... that you may have been of interest to us and this one just stood out so it is it's our black uniform with instead of the sox on the chest it's got the batterman on the chest and we took our primary logo and 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 put it on the sleeve 
The reason we put the primary logo on the sleeve is not for White Sox fans. White Sox fans certainly know what the Batterman right. is, but around the country, they might not know that that is a secondary logo for the White Sox. So uh, to be able to put that together, to have the reaction from the fans, that's what we're trying to do is trying to put cool things on our players that the fans like. And I explained, I had that question earlier today from an attendee. We can't put them on the players during a regular season game. We have to submit over a year in advance of any uniform changes that we might sure. be doing. Now, if we have something that happens where we, we, we lose a family member, like when we lost Billy Pierce and put a patch, right. that's a little bit different situation. But if we want to completely change what a uniform would look like or add in an alternate uniform, that's something that we have to submit well in advance. Do you have anything cooking? Of course. Good stuff? We're not ready to break it on WLS, but if you want to find out, the best place to listen is the home of the White Sox, WLS. You're a good Flagship man, station. Appreciate it. I assume none of them will be uh, blaze orange like the Tigers will be dressed in head we, to toe. We, there, there's no blaze orange and there's no lightning bolts. That is, that's a, I mean, I, I assume, and you mentioned, you know, everybody got, I assume everyone got the same five, you know, swatches and tests and whatnot to do that whole thing, and I'm, I'm guessing that you know the guys over at the Tigers, I, I wonder... Look, I don't mean you to break bad or talk out of school or anything, but good lord, man, that's a lot of orange. You know, I'm I'm originally from Michigan. I know. Um, so look, if if it's gonna make them play worse, I'm all for it. And anything to make anybody in the division play worse, you know, if they can't see, the catcher can't catch because right. it's you know the orange is too bright. I'm all for it. Uh, how do things look uh, for the season? How can people get in touch with buying a couple extra tickets uh, for, for nice sunny weekends like the ones? I mean, it's almost 40 degrees out here today. But I, I might take this on opening day. You know, there's been some opening days. That they, let's try. Uh, yeah, it, our season tickets are available right now. There's there's full season ticket plans. There's, there's split season ticket plans, 27 games, 14 game plans, 7 game plans. Our group tickets are on sale. So looking at the schedule, looking at the fun things that are going to be happening, at the ballpark this summer, uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a good time to, to pick up some season tickets. For me, the 27 game plan is, is I mean, that fits for, for me because you get enough tickets that you can go pretty much anytime you want and you get enough that if you, you know, if you've decided to go and something comes up like a, a christening or whatever the heck comes up, you, you got enough to hand out to somebody else. You, you can get somebody else to the ballpark. I, I love the 27. Now you do realize in your new role here that you're going to be at all the games. All of them? Yes. Every you're gonna have to. You, you, so, so I don't know if a 27 plan is necessarily gonna fit you. This is the first I'm hearing about this. But uh, uh, yeah, for for someone who's young like you and 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 likes getting out to the ballpark, you know, we we we've got so many fun things that that we've got planned this season. And and to to get a group of friends, get a group of you know, family together. And that you're right on the 27 game plan. If if there's four of you that are interested, it's it's the best way to guarantee your guarantee yourself the best seats for the best games. Brooks, appreciate you coming out. Thanks for stopping by. We'll uh, we'll catch up with you again a little later. Always great to be on. Thanks to all the fans for listening and switching over to 890. There you go, uh, Brooks Boyer. You almost sent this out there to break. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, I, yeah. I do. You, really well. Uh, are you worried? Do, uh, are you no, worried? not worried okay. at all. Okay. You want to do? Uh, you listening to White Sox Weekly WLS AM 890? No, I, you know you, you you need the practice. This is like this is like spring training. We'll you got to get the reps. We'll take the reps. You listen to White Sox Weekly here on WLS AM 890.